Sweet, sweet skyboards. <laughs> Bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are unboxing and building the new Necromunda. Uh, what is this? I guess this is kind of like a reinforcements pack for the Van Saris. Now, uh, so this year they they did a reinforcement pack, and I think the ogres were counted as one of them too in there somewhere uh, for each of the major factions, and then coming out. Uh, in first quarter of 2021, I think will be uh, just generic like characters and stuff. Uh, and then followed by, you know, it was either Caldor and then Delac or vice versa. I forget the exact order, but basically that gets us through Q3 in 2021, according to our roadmap. Hopefully everything gets gets back to normal and uh, G-Dub can get the, uh, the releases out the door there. But for now, we at least got these. And we're going to take a look because they got these really cool little skyboard graph cutter things. Uh, they're definitely harnessing their, their inner green goblin, I feel like. Uh, now this kit is $42. Now the year before you might remember they were $35 for these kits, but everything got a price increase, uh, I guess about June of this year in the middle of the uh, pandemic still. But don't forget, you can always get your hobbies for less at uh, dicehead.com, your local game store, or hopefully Amazon. Ho hopefully you can even find them at this point. It's like, hey, we just uh, we just want to get this stuff. So this kit comes with roughly six models. So that's about seven bucks a figure, give or take. And I guess these kind of count as two models because whenever you have something riding something else, whether it's a bike or you know uh, like a cavalry mount or something like that, it's technically counts as two mounts. I mean. It's basically two models worth of painting, so that's the way I look at it, right? So I guess you could kind of break it down and say, well, it's two, four, six, eight, ten, ten models, and then it's four twenty a model, give or take. <laughs> but either way, uh, you know, it's it's about on par with the Games Workshop quality and value. Now, when you open it up, uh, you will see, you will notice very very quickly, it's got some accessories that we haven't quite seen before, like these these really cool uh, energy shield type things. But, and then of course the stands that are kind of buster. These I've ended up actually uh, cutting that off. And I think we did a video on this uh, for our suppressors where we put a uh, smaller 1 16th inch magnets on here. And then we put them up into uh, the model itself. And that seemed to hold it pretty good for the most part uh, for a space marine with a jump pack. Now I'm not sure that, that would work for the sky cutter, but, um, and we'll take a look at that because, uh, you know, maybe we'll, Maybe we'll dig into that, maybe we won't. But the sprue themselves, just like last time, it's the same sprue, just times two, the same thing they do with Blood Bowl and the same thing uh, that they do with uh, Necromunda as well. Instruction time. So this instruction book, let's flip it open here. Um, generally I've been kind of, uh, lately I've been kind of uh, not impressed with the Necromunda uh, rule sets here or not rule sets uh instruction booklets and uh, i'm gonna see if they improve on this one so it looks like the archaeotech there's two different versions of them and both of them start you build it the basic model to here and then you pick if you want style one or style two just like we've seen in the past with a lot of these instruction booklets and then it kind of goes through but kind of digging in here i can already tell uh, it looks like the legs are no big deal there but then there's these really fiddly parts it looks like there's a duck bill on the front of this guy's chest here and then he's got this gun but the gun is like in half for no practical reason i guess other than maybe it wouldn't work well on, on the, the sprue configuration there but okay uh not that big of a deal and then you've got this clamshell thing that goes around uh the neck and then the head goes on there and more clamshell uh, weapon things here and it looks like these little wires plug in somewhere they don't really show you so i guess they're up here and that's so i kind of don't like that how they don't really should they flip it over but they don't show you exactly where it's supposed to go like that lines up with there which is nice because they show you right there but they don't show you where the wires go like did it goes in there and there okay i, I mean Maybe that's just a little nitpicky. And then you can choose what you want to put onto this right here. Uh, for the second one, whether it's this grabby arm or this arm here, same clamshell bits, it looks like, yep. And then the head. So that all goes together pretty predictably. Jumping over to the Necrotex, uh, these have Necrotech 1, Necrotech 2. They're very similar, but at some point they're a little different here. So you build them the same 
28, 26. Nope, these have different legs. They're gonna have different poses, different chest, different backs. So it's a completely different model altogether. And then this is interesting, and we'll have to try this out because that's a clear component. Sometimes depending on the glue you use, it could craze up and like frost the clear components. So they've got these two little plastic bits. They say, painted side, painted while on sprue transparent shield can be attached to these frames. Uh, after these frames have been painted. So they want you to paint it on the sprue and then attach it here. Uh, Cause I guess, yeah, I guess you, you can prime it and then, I guess you can prime it and then attach it and still paint it. Cause the GW ones in the box, it looks like they painted the glowy bits right here. So they definitely glue that together. But the thing to take note of is that if you don't glue the plastic to the plastic and you get glue on the clear component, it might craze it up, but we'll, te we'll test that just to be sure. And then over here, um, looks like very similar configurations, 25, no, they're not the same bit. And then grab cutter. So we're gonna circle this right here and uh, it looks like that, see now this is the weird part okay i get that so now you've got it flipped down but they don't really tell you to flip it over and that that's the rear so if you're not really following along you might get easily confused here and then i don't know what this bit is but it doesn't look like they're really i mean how are you supposed to tell what that bit is right uh, okay and i mean i guess it's that looking thing but it's really hard to tell i'd much rather see a picture of that than that and then you've got the skyboard mount and you've got the three different necro techs that you have built it looks like you make two of the same one did they notate that? Necrotech one, Necrotech two. Oh, there's actually four. So you make two of each, which makes sense because there's all those sprues. And then you just put them down on the skyboard, it looks like, and it just works. And then the skyboard, they tell you to do different poses, I guess, so it looks a little different depending on the guys that you put on it. And then you glue the shield to the guy. Okay, so in theory, that seems pretty pretty straightforward um now they don't tell you the size of base and they don't give you kind of a layout of the sprue which is one of the things that i guess we're kind of spoiled from uh with the games workshop warhammer 40k instructions uh but let's take a look at the sprue here so just kind of jumping in and checking it out it looks like You've got your two skyboards, of course, and then the two halves of the skyboards, everything that goes together there. But all the other bits, like there's the collars, and wow, everything is really on here. And it looks like it's all multi-part, so you're gonna have to trim the flash because they're right on that plane right there, so it's gonna get flash all over them. So it isn't quite ETB or anything like that. You're definitely gonna have to put the effort in here and work out those hobby muscles uh, just to shave off all those parts. But, um, I mean, it, Definitely, you can tell from the instructions, it seems pretty well detailed. I mean, everything looks really good. There's a torso and some of the weapon stuff. So, well, enough chit chat. Let's uh, let's clip this all down and get some of these models together and kind of take a look at uh, at things. So, first model assembled. Here's the Archaeotech, and I left it zoomed out just to show you how absolutely tiny, tiny he seems like. He is way smaller than I thought he was going to be. Now, let's take it closer. And magic zoomed in. So, here's the model, and man, let me tell you what, this guy is super tiny. Uh, this was a bit fiddly to put together, to be quite honest. Like, you can see the gun is in two parts. I'm not exactly sure why. That, it, it was just very frustrating. I mean, it wasn't a hard build, but with the, the instructions the way they are, when they're not super oriented, and when you're trying to put, I mean, you can see how small these wires are. Come on. Like, the, oh, well, there goes a piece. These wires are super tiny, and it was like trying to position this and line up those wires, and there's no socket. It's just straight, like, glued onto the surface. I just, I mean, these are very, this is a very, very fiddly build. Um, and I feel like the instructions are not a whole lot of help. Like it was really hard to tell that that, that, that was that bit because from the front, yeah, it looks like it, but then you get it in your hand and you're like, wait, is that right? And then you turn it and you're like, I guess it's right. I mean, it looks like it fits there and that's really the only way it can fit on there. Maybe I'm talking out my butt, you know, and I was looking at the pictures, but all the pictures on the model are pretty much for the most part. Well, you can see it on the model, of course, right there, right in, right in front of things right there but you know it was kind of hard to see without you know having it in front of the camera and being super blown up so i guess you're gonna have to use the box art as well as uh the instruction manual you know, to kind of put it all together and then this one little wire is supposed to run from right here to right here on the socket literally tried putting it on using tweezers and 
Well, I failed miserably. So I was like, after like five attempts, I was like, you know what? I'm good. Uh, this looks just fine without it. And, uh, you know, if you experience uh, similar uh, issues there, uh, like I said, it looks just fine without it. And then this actually glues on. Well, normally we glue on like this, but I broke it off. But it looks pretty cool. I mean, the model itself looks pretty neat. And I got no beef with it. Let's take a look at the sky cutter. So I glued the sky cutter down to uh, the, the little... Um, area right there that it was supposed to and then kind of cocked it off to, to the right there so it was a little bit uh, dynamic now let's see if I can show you you can see a little bit of crazing right there at the bottom where I put a little bit of glue onto the clear area so you want to be super careful that you don't get the glue on there because it will mar the surface and kind of craze it up if you're looking for that super clear kind of finish um, you do probably want to prime the, at least these parts beforehand, but you could use some brush on primer, like the pro acrylic stuff that they just came out with uh, to kind of brush on there in two coats and then just uh, have it all ready to paint kind of going forward. Um, otherwise you could just prime it and then just airbrush the glowy effects. But I feel like uh, just a little bit of paint on there you can use some contrast paint to make it look kind of glowy like uh, like GW did. And then for the skyboard itself, um, it, it goes together pretty well and it looks it looks neat. You know, the guys the guy fits right onto it, just super nice and, and easy right there. And you could probably just blue tack them down to paint them if you really wanted to. But scale wise, I mean it doesn't it doesn't seem unrealistic. I mean this is you know a skyboard, there's a there's a primera, so I mean, they are just about as tall as they are. Remember, there's three different stands, so they're going to be different heights. And the models are basically a guardsman, you know. Um, but I guess I just expected this guy to be a little bit bigger. Then he, he's really just not. So uh, it was just a little bit of a fiddly build. And I, I feel like if the instructions had maybe perhaps been a little bit more... Um, I guess complete on the angles, um, it would have been a little bit easier to build, but that's just really nitpicky. I mean, once you kind of figure out where the parts go, the only thing that's left is to actually try to fit them on there. And like I said, I failed right there, but it, I don't think it takes away from anything on the model. And I'm, you know, I would just be like, oh, okay, well, mess that up and just keep going. Uh, so that is pretty much it. I mean, not a whole lot of gotchas once you get around the instructions and uh, the model layout itself. Um, the great looking models that, uh, you know, really kind of ooze that whole uh, Vansar, Super Techie, um, Nanny Nanny Boo Boo, we got all the good stuff uh, kind of feel in uh, <laughs> Necromunda over the, uh, over the other guys, but they're all specialized in something, I suppose. So uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching a holiday edition of our unboxing builds here for uh, the new Necromunda Advansar Archaeotex and Grav Cutter Squad available right meow uh, over at dicehead.com, your local game store, of course, uh, Amazon all day, every day. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.